in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit the grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all my dear people of God today is the fourth Sunday in Easter season this Sunday is dedicated for the vocations particularly vocation to the priesthood or any other vocations, marriage or sisters, missionaries, is all part of that. So we ask God to bless us and give us his grace to be able to carry out his duties and responsibilities. In case we have failed in our duties and responsibilities, let us ask the Lord for pardon and grace. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the leaven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day were added about 3,000 souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, you are rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A reading from the letter of First Peter. Beloved, if you endure you when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For the, this, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. 
whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear people of God, today being the Vocation Sunday, I thought it would be best to share my own vocation story. I grew up in a very devout Catholic family. My mom was very devout and so also my siblings are devout Catholic families. Every day in the morning we attended our mass. You know, six o'clock church bell rang and 6.15 the mass. That means we had to get up five o'clock or so in the morning. And then as soon as you get up, almost we had our morning prayer. Mom was leading the morning prayer and we are following, even though we may be sleepy and hardly said the prayers, but we had to say the morning prayer and then get ready for the mass and we went for the mass. And after coming from the mass, we had to study a little bit, our school subjects. After that, only the breakfast and then we go to school. Anyway, the church was our center of activity. Everything was in and around the church. Anything and everything, not only faith aspect, religious aspect, our liturgical celebrations, but also our sports. I was very good in sports. I liked sports. At that time, volleyball, basketball, and badminton, few of the sports with the cricket and so on. Wonderful, wonderful. Everything centered around the church area. As I was growing up in high school, I was leaning towards studying engineering and pre-university level, getting into. And then there was a parish priest, a wonderful parish, a good old man, may God rest his soul, said, Vincent, God must be calling you. And I said, Father, you write to him. I didn't mean to God, but to a bishop somewhere along the line. And he wrote, and the bishop was accepting me. And then mom said that diocese may be too far away. But I had a great interest also in the Jesuits because in our locality there were plenty of Jesuits. Somehow missed the call there, but missed for the secular diocesan priest. And then I told the parish, mom says that diocese is far. He wrote to the another priest, another bishop rather. And so that bishop also accepted me. And so that was okay and fine. When I went there, it was far away, farer than the other eyes. But mom did not know the distance there. See, you now join the seminary, Latin and other subjects. I was enjoying my life uh, in the seminary, good in every way, camaraderie, so many different uh, students studying towards priesthood, wonderful different languages different cultures, I must say, not my own, other cultures. Some of the names I did not even know that they were baptized Catholics because they were Hindu sounding names. Now, doing the philosophy, after philosophy, you know, you study a variety of philosophy, not only ancient, classical, and then modern philosophy, and then existential philosophy, and then being in India, you have also Indian philosophies, plenty of philosophies. You know, my head was swollen, so to speak, because it was too much. I wanted a break after five years of seminary, three years of philosophy, two years of Latin and other subjects. So I wanted to take a break. And during that time, I was thinking and reflecting, maybe I should continue my engineering studies. Or maybe whether God was really calling me in this perspective. So I was in the different diocese, helping out in a diocesan center to a wonderful priest friend of mine, Father John Fernandez's name, wonderful, he was a brilliant man, studied in Germany, and his bishop appointed him for a diocesan center where I was helping him with translations and some music collection of 
music, everything. So in the evening, I had a lot of time. And at that time, I didn't know what to do. So there was that diocesan, this is in the different diocesan, diocesan uh, hospital. Wonderful diocesan hospital. I knew the director very well. All Catholic hospital, lots of nuns, nurses, and director and several priests working there. So I regularly been visiting there in the evening, visiting the sick people. That's a very Catholic uh, uh, activity, you know, Catholic uh, doing visiting the sick, Jesus said to us. It's corporal charity. And so one day I saw a big wall there, so, so big a wall. And there were some nurses were coming, sisters were coming and going. So I entered in to my shock. As a young man seeing, to my shock, I saw lots of children and adults with leprosy. And they were rehabilitated in that corner beyond the wall. I was simply shocked to see, you know, that leprosy, external limbs, finger being eaten by finger, bone eating, bone flesh eating flesh, nose disappearing, ears disappearing, perhaps lips and the, and the toes completely different. I remember as a young boy reading the life of Saint Damien in Monaco Islands. There was a leprosy colony and he evangelized that, that colony. It was a really moving story and this is what I was thinking. So I approached the doctor and the nurses and sisters and all that, don't touch them you do whatever you speak to them and so on. And, and every day when you go home, you, you take shower, you wash yourself. Every day, say, we didn't want to take anything. During the course of time, meeting with them, and I, I realized their feelings and emotions are same as mine. As growing up, they wanted to be with the family, but they are taken away from their families for this treatment, rehabilitation, and, and their desires. There were so many children, so I purchased a football and I had to play with them. And I, I knew guitar, I taught them songs, some social songs, funny songs. So we became very good friends. Even though I was thinking about either leaving or going back to my studies in engineering, and it seems to me somehow God was running after me even though I was running after these things. And by the year end, we became so very good friends. And that I think that call that God was after me, calling me to this priesthood, became a kind of a solidified vocation. I attribute to these peoples with leprosy. I never went back after that because it's so far away and I, I hope they are doing well, healed, and doing leading their family members, friends, and relatives. Some may have died, doesn't matter. But what matters is that going to these children with leprosy and playing with them, teaching them some hymns, some songs, speaking about Christ Jesus, and playing with them, somehow or other God brought me to my vocation story. All of you have a story, beautiful story. God is calling us for various ministries, even simplest as lector in the believing and worshiping community, Eucharistic minister, children's liturgy, the ushering, and choir, the service, the missionaries, missions, evangelizing, spreading the good news. These are all part of our vocation, you know. And people calling for marriage, and they are the models for their children, evangelize. Every one of us has a vocation, and somehow, very beginning, we did not know, because it's like a seed we are planting. We have to need for water to, to spring and sprout and bear fruit. Only during the course of our time, we will understand that God was calling us to do his ministries. I'm grateful to God for having brought me here for another purpose to Orwell. And all these years, this has been my life. 
spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. May this good shepherd lead us. We hear his voice, we are the sheep. We hear his voice, we know he's calling us and we have to pass through his gate. He opens his door, pass through his gate. Sometimes there are up and downs, difficulties, you see. It's not always beautiful, pleasant and wonderful. Sometimes up and down, which we have gone through and many of you go through too, but God will give us the grace to be able to follow his right path. I'm grateful to all my friends, wherever they may be. They are praying for me and they are, I'm praying for them in this time. I'm thinking of them and some of them have gone and gone before, have gone to eternal life. They are resting in peace. Some of them are with me here and elsewhere. You know, one thing I want to say, every time we had every day rosary at home, every day in the evening around 7, 7.30, and after the rosary, my older sister Cecilia used to open the gospel, and every day reading of the scripture, then a little bit of discussion. You know, even though we did not understand much, but older sister Cecilia did that every day, every day. But mom, when she started the, the creed, mom's creed was Nicene Creed. And we used to ask, Mom, there is a shorter version of this creed. That is act that's Apostles' Creed. You should, you should study that one and learn by heart. Read that one. Then Nicene Creed. But wonderful family. Vocation comes from the families. You know, Catholic Christian families, vocations are there. There's a calling. Deep down has to be a calling. Thank God for the calling. And our church is really, as in the, as in the Acts of the Apostles, numbers are added. The Easter time and other time baptized children of God becoming part and parcel of the family, the church, and we are the church. Amen. Let us uh, make the profession of faith in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with the Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, even the heavenly powers with the angelic host, praise to gather the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was in, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Terence, our Bishop, and Guy, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the blessed Virgin May, the mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be chorus to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and calls us in our vocation. There is no much theology, philosophy, psychology, ecclesiology, simple calling. And that simple calling is to spread the word of God to all the peoples all over the world and sanctify them. If you are ordained priest, sanctify them with the sacraments, baptism, anointing of the sick, confirmation, mostly bishop, but Easter time we will do, and distribution of the Holy Communion, in this, making the body and blood of Christ in the, in the Mass, and then marriage. All this put together. So there is no big theology, philosophy, as a young man you are going into the seminary to be trained. So, many are called, few are chosen. We pray for all of us, our parents, brothers and sisters, everybody, including priests, and pray for me. Together we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To leave us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the wound of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring it on my poor sin. Lord Jesus Christ, may the receiving of the body and blood of Christ not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body, a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle an eternal pasture. The sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. And please know that I prayed for you and you pray for me. God bless you. Thank you.